Hi, thanks for joining me. Today I'm going to be doing something different and I'm going to be talking about this number here. Now loads of mathematicians on YouTube have got together and made, are making lots of different maths videos about their mega favourite numbers. So numbers bigger than a million, which are their favourite, and this is one which I quite like. It's got some really nice properties, as I'll discuss today. Uh, if you're new here, hello, my name's Jamie. I'm a student at the University of Oxford. I generally make pro uh, videos about problem solving and just exploring different bits of maths. So please do subscribe and check those out if you haven't already. Anyway, let's get stuck into this video and I'll, I'm going to talk about why this number is so cool. Well, what is this number firstly? It's 13 billion, 223 million, 140,000 and 496. Yes, it's very, very big. Now why, why, is, why have I written this number here? Okay, let's start with some small numbers and I'll show you that small numbers have or don't have this property and this number does have this property. Okay, let's look at the three smallest positive integers, 1, 2, and 3. And now I'm going to concatenate them with themselves. So 1 becomes 11, 2 becomes 22, and 3 becomes 33. And now I'm also going to look at another number, let's say 173. And if I concatenate it with, himself, with itself, I get 173,173. Now, you can check for these three numbers quite easily. That none of these numbers here are square. 11 is not a perfect square because 11 is between 3 squared and 4 squared. 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, and 11 is somewhere in between. 22 is in between 4 squared and 5 squared. 4 squared is 16, and 5 squared is 25, and 22 is in between, and so on. 33 is not a square. And then you can verify for yourself using a calculator that this is also not a square number. Now you perhaps can see where I'm going with this video. This number here when I concatenate it with, when, with itself, is a square number. But what's so fancy about this number is that in fact it's the smallest positive integer for which when I concatenate it with itself, I get a square number. Now this is remarkable, and this goes to show that uh, just because a property doesn't hold for small numbers, or even if you check up to, you know, 10 digit numbers, and it still doesn't hold, doesn't mean that's true for all the positive integers. And this is a perfect example. Okay, so firstly, how big is this number? Well, it's 13 billion, 223 million, 140,496. So it's got 3, 6, 9, 11 digits. So it's bigger than 10 to the power of 10, but smaller than 10 to the power of 11. And this has the property that when I concatenate it with itself, I get a square number. And it's the smallest number which does so. So let's just write out what exactly that is. So 1, 3... 2, 2, 3, 1, 4, 0, 4, 9, 6. Let me write it again now because I'm concatenating it. 1, 3, 2, 2, 3, 1, 4, 0, 4, 9, 6. That's a very big number. That there is 3, 6, 3, 6, 3, 6, 3, 6, and another 3, 6, and then just a 4 there, squared. Okay? So that is a perfect square number. If I take this number here and square it, I get this massive number here. And it's the smallest positive integer for which when I concatenate it with itself, I get a perfect square. Now this is all nice. And how can I go about, a question you may be asking yourself is how can I go about constructing these sorts of numbers? And Well, how many are there? Are there infinitely many? Are there only finitely many? Now here's a cool way in which you can construct some of digit n, where n is some number you choose. So let's have a look at any concatenation in a bit more detail first. So let's look at the number 327 concatenated with itself. Well firstly 327 is a three digit number but notice that this number here is 327 times 1000 plus 327. It's 327,000 plus 327 so it's 327 times 10 to the 3 plus 327. But of course we can write that as 327 times 10 cubed plus 1. Okay, well that's, what, that's quite nice. Um, so 3 here is the number of digits of 327, and that works in general as well. So if I have some number t, and I concatenate it with itself, which I'm going to denote with this star operation here, so t concatenated with t, that's going to be 10 to the power of n plus 1 times t, where n is the number of digits in the number t. So if t is a four-digit number, then n would be 4, and so on. And now, 
you may wonder, hmm, are there, I've claimed that this is the smallest uh, positive integer, but you may be going, surely there must be a number smaller than 10 to the 10, which uh, when I concatenate it with itself, I get a square number, but that is not the case. And you can check it using this sort of algorithm, which I'm gonna, about to, uh, I'm about to describe for you. Um, of course, you could check each and every number, but that would require a lot of computer power. But here's a nice way you can check all the two-digit two digit numbers in one go, and you can do the same for three digits, three digits, four digits, and so on. Okay, so let's look at two, digit, two digits. Oh, I can't speak today. Let's look at two-digit numbers, T. And I'm going to show that none of them, when I concatenate them with themselves, gives me a number which is square. Okay, well, if I have T, a two-digit number, then T concatenated with T is this thing here. But of course, in the case n equals 2. So this is the case n equals 2. So I've got 10 squared plus 1 times t. Now 10 squared is 100, so of course this is just 101 times t. Now, if this is a square number, well, firstly, 101 is prime. And now you can quickly check that, that's not too difficult. But 101 is prime. So for this number here to be square, it must be of the form uh, t t must be some square number, which I'm going to call p squared, times 101. Okay, and that simply is because any square, a number, a positive integer is a square number, if and only if, when you look at its prime factors, each of them are raised to an even power. Okay, and because 101 is prime, when I look, to, look at the prime, factoration, prime factorization of t, t must have 101 occurring an odd number of times, so that when I put it here, 101 times t, it must be occurring an even number of times, and of course this p squared here will still be an even uh, exponent here. So 101 times t will be a square number. But, because t, we said is two digits, and p squared is a positive integer, in particular it's a positive square integer, this number here is going to be at least 101. But then, of course, t is no longer two digits, so it doesn't work. Okay, so we've shown here that you can't do it in the case where t has two digits, and you can use a similar argument to show that you can't do it for three digits, four digits, five digits, six digits, seven digits, eight digits, nine digits, ten digits. And then when you get to 11 digits, you sort of modify the argument, and you go, actually, you know what, there could be one. And in fact, there is one. There is this number here. Now, a question I leave to you is perhaps to ask, how many of these numbers are there? Are there finitely many? Are there infinitely many? And, hmm, are there any sort of particular properties of these numbers? Like, for example, here, we, we showed, of course, that the concatenation is not prime, because, of course, the concatenation is something times 10 to the n plus 1. But what about the number itself? Can that be prime? Can it not be prime? Um, so I leave those as exercises and just things to explore for yourself. But anyway, if you have enjoyed this video, this is my mega favourite number. Um, I will leave links in the description below to other videos I've seen which I really, really like. I'm going to go on a binge watch tonight and watch loads of other mega favourite number videos. But that's all for now. If you have enjoyed this video, please do consider subscribing and liking the video as well. And I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day.